at one tenth the cost of NASA, which is why NASA wants to study how ISRO works. What these people are discussing is called ORBAT. It is called order of battle. And the order of battle of uh, any army is extremely sensitive. This is not something that needs to be discussed. This could be dangerous because, see, there are two things. You can always have that argument that, hey, the Chinese already know this. Why do you want to confirm that? Jen friends, I'm Bejo Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Friends, a lot is happening in the Atmanirbharta space and very recently an order of 19,000 crores was signed. Uh, the Cabinet Committee on Security has given an order to Brahmos Aerospace saying that the Indian Navy desires to purchase 200 Brahmos extended range supersonic cruise missiles for deployment on warships. The entire order is 19,000 crores. Uh, this comes to approximately, uh, what? Something like uh, $2 billion plus USD. So this is the latest order. You see, every single day we're hearing, ladies and gentlemen, about how, how the armed forces are getting latest weapon systems and most of the expenditure which is happening, thankfully, is happening within India. So what, what happens? How does the industry grow? Brahmos Aerospace would have thousands of suppliers spread all over the country. And whenever Brahmos Aerospace gets business, all these companies within India get business. And when they get business, people get jobs. And that is how the economy becomes bigger and bigger. And also, Brahmos Aerospace, you know, it is exporting to other countries. It is uh, exporting to the Philippines. Uh, it's held up because of rains in the Philippines and the installation there needs to be absolutely dry for the Brahmos to come in and once they're installed, then it does not matter if there are rains or not. But uh, uh, that order is through for the Philippines and we are looking at orders to other countries also. And, you know, the government of India has given an export target to Brahmos Aerospace. Come year 2025, 5 billion US dollars every year you have to export. And Brahmos Aerospace has said, yes, sir, we'll do it. We are up for the challenge. So Brahmos Aerospace is going to be from next year onwards exporting 5 billion US dollars every year. And this is just one platform. This is just one platform. This will grow from 5 to 10 billions over a period of time. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, it opens up avenues for other things, you know, like uh, the Akash system. Now, Akash is a great missile that we use in India. And why is Akash great? It is a surface to air missile, which means that anything incoming, Akash can take care of. When I say incoming, I mean missiles, I mean aircraft, I mean helicopters, I mean large drones, anything, right? It provides fantastic air defense cover. India wants to sell Akash. India also wants to sell artillery to other countries. India is now making artillery, top of the line artillery. And I think what India has learned from ISRO, this entire ISRO thing, you know that you can send a technologically advanced rocket as advanced as the one made by NASA at one-tenth the cost of NASA, which is why NASA wants to study how ISRO works. You know, and uh, they've uh, requested in the past also that we'd like to understand how you guys, you know, this thrifty sort of engineering, how, how do you guys do it? It does the job. It's 10 times cheaper or maybe 20 times cheaper. And uh, how, how do you do it? And this is what India has brought to the table as far as other weapons are. These weapons are value for money, highly effective, state-of-the-art, and Brahmos is not amongst the world's best, ladies and gentlemen. In its class, it is the best weapon in the world. There is no weapon in that class and category that can beat Brahmos. Uh, so India is saying that uh, we need to supply our weapons to other countries also. Uh, there is another news that I would like to uh, share with you today. And this, you know, uh, I'm, I'm slightly upset about this actually. So various articles coming out, you know, you heard about UB area and we broke the news to you a couple of days back that the Uttar Bharat area, which is part of Central Command, is now getting combatized and, uh, you know, it's going to be called 18 core, etc, etc. So much of details have come out in the media and they should not have come out. Friends, you see what happens is that uh, I've also covered a lot in my media career. You must have seen me going out to various army units. I used to do a show called Patriot. It was a very well-received show and people loved the show. I used to go all over the place. I would go to, uh, uh, you know, Siachen Glacier and I would go to Kashmir and I would go to Rameshwaram in the south, West Bengal, Assam, Nagaland, Gujarat, 
Maharashtra. I've been everywhere. I mean, covered for the army, for the navy, for the coast guard, and also the BSF. You see, I've covered for CRPF, the Naxal areas. We never talked about anything strategic. And every single episode of Patriot, every single episode I shot more than I think 130, 140 episodes and every single episode was cleared by the parent agency, which means that, you know, I would send the video back to, let's say it was an army shoot. I would send the video to the army and the army would say that, okay, uh, you know, this is safe. You can send out this to the public. I myself was extremely conscious, extremely conscious. Uh, being from the forces, uh, being very conscious that I should not, you know, inadvertently reveal something which should not be revealed. And plus there was that filter of the army, which is, you know, very rigorous sort of filter. And they set everything right. So we never sort of revealed anything. But all these articles that are coming out in the media that, you know, this will happen and this will 18 core and then this brigade will go into this division and this division will dovetail into 18 core. I don't think these things are required. And I will tell you why these things are not required, ladies and gentlemen. What these people are discussing is called Orbat. It is called Order of Battle. And the Order of Battle of uh, any army is extremely sensitive. This is not something that needs to be discussed. It should not be discussed. You can discuss about forces all you want. Shoot. Take permission and shoot. There is no problem. But when you start discussing order of battle, then it becomes sensitive and all these things, you know, they're going on and on and on and you know, this will happen and that will happen. Nobody needs to know this. This is not freedom of information or freedom of speech. This is something that is hurting the country. And I think these things are best avoided. Again, I'm saying, this is not to say that the armed forces should not uh, meet up with the media. Of course, shoot your videos, yeah, shoot your videos, shoot whatever you wish to shoot. I mean, do whatever you wish to do. There is no problem. But when you start delving into domain that is strategic, there is a difference between information and causing harm to the nation. And this kind of information definitely causes harm to the nation. I think it is best avoided. And I don't blame the journalist who has written this. I don't blame the journalist who has written all these articles, not one, but there are so many articles. I don't blame the journalist who have written it because there is no journalist who will know all this. There is no way that a journalist will figure out because these things are not available in the open domain. There are people who are speaking to journalists and I don't think this has been cleared by headquarters. I don't think this has been cleared. There is a wonderful article that uh, General Atta Hasnain has written for Chanakya Forum. The link is there in the description. I would request you to read this article and then you'll know what I'm talking about. This, this, is, uh, this could be dangerous because see there are two things. You can always have that argument that, hey, the Chinese already know this. Or the Chinese probably already know this. I mean, why are we trying to hide it? Why are we trying to say that this is such a huge, uh, you know, secret? The issue is that even if the Chinese know it or don't know it, that's a separate matter. Why do you want to confirm that, you know, their, their information is correct or not? Half of war is about hiding your own information. In fact, more than half, half the war. It is about hiding information. It is about hiding knowledge. If you give information to the enemy on a platter, he will use it against you. So I think this is something that needs to be uh, taken care of. Uh, with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I come to the end of my video today. It's going to be a short video. As you see, I'm outside, I'm standing and, uh, you know, I'm out of station. So, which is why I'm recording like this. The first question is Parth Popat. He's saying, Namaste Gaurav my question is, what does Sweden get if it joins NATO and why can't they either join or finalize not joining? Why do they keep telling us perpetually that Sweden may join NATO? I don't know, but local politics, I don't know why Sweden is not joining NATO. But the reason why people join NATO is that they say that there is safety in numbers and one of the cardinal rules, uh, Parthji, of, of, uh, of NATO is that if you attack one NATO member, it is deemed that you have attacked all members of NATO and then everybody gets after you. So there is safety in numbers. This is like a college fight, you know, that you have a huge gang of friends and if you touch one guy, then 50 guys come and say that you touched our friend, we'll fight with you. This is typical college mindset on which NATO works. I don't know why, why Sweden is saying whether they want to join or not join. If they want, they should just join it and get over with it. Ramesh Chivukula. He's saying I'm Kamesh. I beg your pardon, Kamesh 
Chiku, uh, Chivukula. He's saying, I'm coming from Bhuvaneshwar. My question is, are Sikh moderates, okay, this is interesting. Are Sikh moderates following the same path as Muslim moderates? They look down with disdain at the extremist element and terrorists will not openly condemn them. Their silence is making these extremist elements more aggressive by the day. Will 1984 carnage against Sikhs get repeated? Uh, there is a danger of Indians viewing the Sikhs as troublemakers, not patriotic folk. No, I don't think, Kamesh, that is true because the contributions of uh, the Sikh community have been immense and I don't think 1 or 2 percent of these troublemakers or Khalistanis uh, are going to tarnish the reputation of the Sikhs. I don't think so. As far as 1984 is uh, concerned, heaven forbid, heaven forbid that should ever happen. It was horrifying. I'm, as I've mentioned many times on video, I'm a witness and I, I think this is terrifying absolutely. It should never, ever, ever happen again. Not in India, not in any country. Absolutely terrifying. Uh, as far as the moderates, you know, not speaking up, that is true. I have a large number of Sikh friends. I have a large number of cosmets in the army who are Sikhs. I have juniors and seniors. And they, they don't like the Khalistanis at all. They don't like the Khalistanis. They're saying that these guys are stupid, absolutely. They said they should be thrashed. But the fact of the matter is that Khalistanis exist and they have to be taken care of now. Abroad is where it matters. And uh, our Sikh brothers and sisters don't raise their voice enough because Khalistanis everywhere, they are violent people, right? And they use the language of violence. And this is something that, I've, that I have... Uh, maintained for a very long time. You can't reason with a Khalistani because the Khalistani does not speak the same language as you speak. You know, a Khalistani understands only the language of violence and that is the language they understand, unfortunately. With this, I come to the end of uh, my video today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Mataram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.